Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to keep on trucking through our A&P series here. But sadly, we're on the very last lecture of the bones. We're going to do the foot bones. Can't believe we finally made it all the way through the skeleton. So let's check out the metatarsals, the tarsals, and the phalanges of the foot. Let's see it. Okay, welcome to the bottom of the skeleton. This is our last, sadly, very sadly, our last talk on the bones. So let's talk about the 26 bones that form each foot. Now, just as a reminder, here is a T for the tibia and an F for the fibula. So that's where we left off on the last talk. And I can see the bones here. If I put a line here, I could differentiate the metatarsals from the tarsals. And if I put a line here, I could differentiate those metatarsals from the phalanges. So you see it kind of has the same structure as the hand, but a little different. Remember in the hand, we had eight carpal bones. There were two rows of four. And in the foot, they're called tarsals, and there's only seven of them. So there's one fewer bone here that forms this ankle and heel than formed the wrist. So seven tarsals make the ankle and the heel. Five metatarsals, again, right in here, named pretty much the same way we named the metacarpals that made up the palm of the hand. And then, of course, we've got the piggies out at the end here, the phalanges. Again, 14, not 15. Each one should have three, but the big toe, or what we call the great toe, only has two, so we only have 14 phalanges. Okay, let's take a look at the tarsals. This is a shot from the top of the foot. So the one sticking out on the top, this big giant guy, should be the talus, the top tarsal. Remember, the talus is the top tarsal that touches the tibia. And that's where we're going to get the weight from. The body will be pushed down onto the, that talus bone. And the talus will redirect that, uh, that weight all the way through the heel bone and the rest of the foot. So the talus transfers weight. That's what it's there for, from the tibia to the rest of the foot. The calcaneus takes a lot of that. And I'll put cal here, cal for calcaneus, the heel bone sticking out of the back. You may have heard of a tendon that comes out here and goes up to the upper part of the leg called the, uh, you call it the Achilles tendon, but in A&P it's called the tendocalcaneus, meaning that it originates from the heel bone or the calcaneus. Of course, in a human that stands upright in a bipedal fashion, we use the calcaneus for balance. Without your heel, you'd probably fall over backwards a lot more than you think that you would. Now, there's two of the five, or two of the seven, sorry, so we only have five more to go. Let's check them out. Navicular. Navicular, I, I always think, means rainbow, even though I don't actually know what it means. But I'm going to draw it kind of here as a little rainbow so we can see it. So in front of talus is navicular, just like that. And the one in front of the calcaneus is another C called cub. I'll just put cub there for cuboid. So there are, are four of the bones. They're quite easy to name. Talus, calcaneus, navicular, and cuboid. And the other set of three here, I'll just put them in a big box for the first. They are all called cuneiform bones. Some people call them cuneiform or cuneiform. There's a lot of ways to say it, but I say it cuneiform because that's the way that I was taught it. So three bones here in front of digits one, two, and three. Very simply, this one is the medial cuneiform because the big toe, the talus, the tibia, they're all medial. The intermediate cuneiform, that one gets missed a lot on the test because people forget. They try to call it the middle cuneiform, but it's actually called the intermediate cuneiform. And then, of course, that must mean there's a lateral cuneiform right there. And there's how to name the seven tarsal bones. As far as the metatarsal goes, they're just as easy as the metacarpals were. Remember, the digits are just called one through five. Number one is the big toe, which is this guy here. And then we have two, three, four, and five. And then you can just name the metatarsals exactly the same way you named the metacarpals. So this one here I'm putting an X on would be called meta metatarsal one. There's metatarsal 2 and metatarsal 3. You could say something like the fourth metatarsal, or you could say something like that's the metatarsal of digit 5. But at the end of the day, there are the metatarsals, and they're just simply named 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Just for practice here, you can see the talus, one of these tarsal bones. Here's calcaneus jutting out as the heel bone. In front of calcaneus, remember, is cuboid. 
in front of talus is navicular right here. And then we have one, two, three, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Those must be the cuneiforms. So here's the medial cuneiform, the intermediate cuneiform, and the lateral cuneiform, just to practice the tarsals from a lateral aspect. Okay, to wrap up the foot here, remember we got our tarsals back there. You can practice them again if you want to give it a shot. You got your metatarsals here. If you want to practice them, give it a shot without me destroying it with the answers. And that leaves us with the phalanges, which are the same thing, exactly the same thing. They're called in the fingers and more to that right here. So there are 14, just like there were in the hand. And I've made the point they are going to be named not, not similarly to the fingers, but exactly like the fingers. So each of the digits will have a proximal phalanx, a middle, and a distal phalanx. Remember phalanx being the singular for phalanges. We don't want to walk around saying phalange, phalange. All right. So just to practice a little bit, and I can show you that there is a bone, here is a little bone, and here is a little bone. This one is the, right, the one closest to the head. So there's the proximal phalanx of digit 5. There's the middle phalanx of digit 5. And there's the distal phalanx of digit 5. And you just play that entire game. So what's this one right here? Proximal phalanx of digit 3. What's the one right here? That's the middle phalanx of digit four, right? Now, the only one that's a little weird again is the great toe, and that is what it's called, the great toe, not the big toe officially. Or you could call it the hallux if you wanted to get really fancy. It has no middle, so it just has a proximal phalanx. You could say proximal phalanx of the hallux, or you could say the proximal phalanx of the first digit. There are a few ways to say that. And then here's the distal one. There is no middle one. All right, just for fun, there was a guy named John Phillips in 1991. He put in an article into, I believe it was the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, it's the February edition of 1991, February 14th, I believe. And he proposed a new scheme for naming the toes based on the little poem or whatever you want to call it called the little piggies. Now, if you're not from America, you may not have heard this before, but there's a rhyme and when you, your, your parents grab your toes and they say something very clever so to help you think about your toes as you fall asleep. So think about that for a minute if you know that poem, and I'll give it away at the end here. He said we should call the big toe Porcellus Fori. The next one should be Porcellus Domi. The next one, Porcellus Carnivorus. The next one, Porcellus Nonviratus. And the smallest, tiniest little toe, he suggested we call Porcellus Plorans Domun. Now, if you know a little bit of the Latin roots, you already know the joke here. But of course, this little piggy went to market, right? This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy ate roast beef. And this little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee, wee, wee. He cried all the way home. So there is a little bit of fun going on in the medical community sometimes. Just remember John Phillips' little piggies if you want to have a little insight into his thinking. All right. If you enjoyed that one, thanks for watching it all the way through. Check out the other videos in the series. And may your piggies have a wonderful day. We've made it to the end of the bones. Hallelujah. See ya for the next section. Bye-bye.